Okay, shalom. Shalom. Praise Yah for this week's Torah. We, we have been away, had a great time. We're dedicating this week's Torah to uh, Josh and Katie and your son and daughter in law, Amy Wark and Reuben Jacob, people we've been praying for this week and uh, really want to see uh, things work in their lives. Hallelujah. This week's Torah is from Deuteronomy chapter 1. And uh, Father, have, Father in heaven, we just thank you for understanding and heart and we believe we'll see more of this as we read for this today in the ocean amen amen so there's a, there's some really incredible teaching to be gleaned from this torah portion um some of the things that we're going to look at are the what how are we going to behave when it comes to judging and this is really incredible torah also the fact that the torah was given on, on uh, at horeb which is a, a name for mount sinai and the significance of this because this can be vowelized as a sword um it, it's spelt defectively in this portion so we're going to talk about that and how the inheritance fell to us and the significance of it falling to us and um, we didn't get it handed to us on the plate you know it came via a falling of somewhere to us yeah. and um it says the sages say that three things come to us via suffering um one of them is torah which is ultimately a revelation of the name of uh yeah. Yahuwah. Yeah. um the th second is the land of eretz israel and the third is mashiach none of these we inherit or come to us except via a certain uh, measure of suffering so we'll actually see how in this verse when it talks about inheriting the land how that is linked to that concept and um we cannot rise and set we first fall this goes back to the torah given in the place of snakes scorpions and vipers it's so that we overcome those forces to be all that we are intended to be with the Torah, with the land, and with the most importantly, the covering of the name Yote Wawe over us. Yeah. Okay. These Everyone. are the words which Moshe spake unto all Israel on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran, Tophel, Laban, and Hazarov, and Dizid, Dizahab. These, uh, there are 11 days' journey from. Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moshe spake unto the children of Yashrael, uh, according to all that Yahuwah had given him in commandment unto them. And he had slain Sihon, the king of Amorites, and dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt in Astaroth, in Edri. Adrei. On this side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moshe to declare this Torah, saying, And Yahuwah, your Elohim, spake unto you in Horeb, saying, he hath, he hath dwelt long enough, ye have dwelt long enough in this man. Okay, so that is that little bit about Horeb, isn't it? And this word is Behorev. And it can actually be vowelized as a sword. It's it's actually missing um, a letter vav. The the full spelling includes a letter vav. Okay, and vav symbolizes life. By the way, it symbolizes truth. It symbolizes the six working days. It symbolizes the six thousand millennia before we reach the seventh oh, millennium of rest. Wow. So we have got we receive the Torah, but we've got to bring that to life within us we've got to make that the living word within us we've got to reveal that the torah is the truth we can only do that when we go up against the snakes the vipians vipers and the scorpions um there's another portion later on which talks about a missing vav and what that missing vav represents five aspects of evil if you like that we have to contend with um in order to uh, acquire um i think we'll talk about it later but there's there's some things that we actually have to contend with um when it comes to life in the desert and receive the receiving of torah there was six 
um, six negative things that we had to go up against. I know them, well, there were snakes, vipers, scorpions, thirst, the shadow of death, and there was one more. So we've got to contend with these forces. We are placed in these positions in this life which challenge us to our absolute core. Why? Because they're proving that this Torah is alive within us and it's also got the power to overcome those forces of evil. So when we're going through a time of trial and testing, bear with it, because the Torah did not give it, get to us and it on a plate. It doesn't come to us, true Torah doesn't come to us, except when we go through these challenges that, are amount, that amount to suffering, we contend with these forces of Satan, each and every one of us is our own life, and through contending, through these challenges and overcoming them and transforming them from darkness into light we establish the full authority of the Torah in our lives till it becomes a living word Hallelujah. Um, I really love uh, this verse 5 began Moshe to declare the law saying you know Deuteronomy really is an explanation of everything they've been through uh, like a, a roundup before they enter into the land but here, it, this declares to explain. Moshe explains in this book, and I'm looking forward to reading this again, the explanation of Torah that Moshe gives us. In verse 6, And Yahuwah, our Elohim, spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you, and take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto the place there unto in the plain and in the hills and in the vale and in the south and by the seaside to the land of canaanites and to lebanon and to the unto the great river euphrates behold i have set the land before you go in and possess the land which yahuwah shall, shall swear unto your fathers abraham yitzhak and yakov to give them and to their seed after them a promise praise you and I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you, bear you myself alone. And Yahuwah, your Elohim, multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. And Yahuwah, Elohim of your fathers, make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and Baruch you as bless you, as, as he have promised you. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Take you wise men and understanding and known among you, your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And he answered me and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, captains over fifty, captains over tens, and officers among, your tri officers among your tribe. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Shema, hear and do, because between your brethren and the judge righteously, between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him, ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall shema, hear and do, the small as well as the great, and ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment of Elohim, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it to me, and I will hear it. Mm. And Should I we say something a little bit about that then? Yeah, yeah sure. Because um, this is when it goes back to, it sh shouldn't judge by the faces. Um, it sh you sh sh you sh that's verse 17 that you've just yeah. read, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So Deuteronomy 1, 17, it says, You shall not show favouritism in judgment. <clears throat> and the word is panim. Panim, bemishpat, which means you shouldn't, it's considered the faces, um, people's faces. We've got two sides to us. It says, I formed you front and back. So there's always a front side of pe people, the, pe the side that people want you to see. And it's usually a mask in some way to try and conceal the... Um, the not so nice things that people try to hide from the world, you know, the backside of our realities. And not um, only that, sometimes there's things, not only their, their countenance, but things they've had to carry all their life, tragedy, anguish, yeah. hurts. They yeah. don't always want you to see that the pain as well as uh, like a, yeah. 
Yeah, they don't the wicked want to side see. of their character. Yeah, yeah, it can be the backside, isn't it? Including all those negative experiences we've had to go through. Um, you know, we're just just talking about it. There, it's, it, it's we, we'll get to that in verse nineteen. Actually, did you read as far as verse nineteen? No, let's do it. Well, and I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do. And when he departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which he saw by the way of the mount of the Amorites, as Yahuwah our Elohim commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, ye, ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which Yahuwah your Elohim doth give unto us. Okay, so that word where it says the, or, the, the entire great wilderness, the awesome one, that word great is miss is it's got an extra vav in it um well it's it's not actually it's not got an extra vav it's spelt perfectly there's many times when gadol is spelled um without the vav and in this case it's got the full vav hagadol hamid bahagadol the great wilderness and this is where the rabbis say the sages say with that extra vav it's alluding to six um th th factors that made the wilderness daunting great you know um forces and there was snake fiery serpent like what i've said scorpions thirst desolation and the valley of the shadow of death and that's taken from 8 15 and also jeremiah 2 6 so those two verses together yield six phenomenally difficult forces that we've got to go through and sometimes we want to hide that 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 all those factors that we've had to confront we want to hide we want to be happy smiley people happy, yeah roses around the cottage oh. door we don't want to admit actually this walk of faith this has been treacherous for us we've been bitten endlessly we we've we've thirsted we feel desolation we we feel like the shadow of death is overhanging us perpetually you know we've yeah. really gone up against these horrible forces and at times it feels that desolation, that desolation you can feel alone and desolate. You can feel like you're not yielding any fruit. But that in itself, to go through these barren um, desert wanderings, is, is it's yielding of fruit. And it's character um, building. It's character building to get us to that place where we're ready Great, to enter yeah. into the promised land. With patience, possess the promises. Yeah. But we want to hide that, don't we? We want it to all, we want to mask that. Oh, yeah, we're happy, we're, everything's okay, honestly. Shiny, shiny. Yeah, we want to judge by the faces. So there's two aspects of that. Sometimes we want to hide the true reality, but sometimes we actually, you know, when we are tested, we do fail. The sin comes out, it takes dominion. We, we put in a situation and we fall, we fall down and literally our backside reality comes and slaps us in the face. And it's usually when we're confronting the snakes and the scorpions and the, the thirst and the desolation, we see what really is hidden within, or we see that backside character come out. Um, are we going to be a living Torah scroll in that situation, or is the negative aspects of our own unref unrefined character going to come into play? And sometimes it's a mixture. Sometimes we do okay, sometimes we need to be... Um, we, we fall down, we need to repent, we need to return to that place where we again are living Torah scroll and we're doing what is right, thinking what is right and speaking what is right. <clears throat> but this well, is not a journey without challenge. I tell you what though, I do love the next verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah but the, going back to don't show favouritism, so when it comes to judging a person, don't just think that what you see at the face is the whole of their reality. No. It says, do not show favouritism to faces, but that's the front side reality. That's the reality that we like everybody to see about yeah. us. Always consider why they're in court is because some of that backside of reality, maybe they've fallen down in this instance and need to be dealt with in, um, in halakhic terms, you know, according to the Torah. You can't just go by a person's upstanding character what they want to show to the public, the face of that person, the good side of that person, the positive character traits. When it comes to, to, to judgment, you've got to consider the backside. Why are they here? What have they been through to bring them here? I.e. it could even be the fact that they've gone, to, uh, they've had gruelling challenges. Uh, even courts this, this day, you know, children that have been exposed to extremely difficult childhoods, 
there is a measure of compassion within the court system to take that into consideration when these children that have never been shown any positive um, examples fall down. So, and likewise, people, um, you know, like um, if, if somebody's genuinely hungry and steals for the sake of eating, even the Torah acknowledges that there's some measure of leniency in this situation. So we've got to always consider what is the backside of this person's reality, not just what is the front side, what is the perfect side, what would we idealistically expect this person to accomplish in life, to be that living Torah school. Let's get some reality brought into the situation because we all contend in the devil in our own lives and this can um, result in problems like that lead to court cases, can't it? However, <laughs> However, let's look at the next verse. <laughs> verse 21. Behold, Yahuwah thy Elohim has set the land before thee. Go up, possess it, as Yahuwah, Elohim of thy fathers, has said unto thee. Fear not. Mm. Fear not. Neither be discouraged. Mm -hmm. So if you just take what Stephanie was saying, yeah. if you have been hiding and masking your whole character, mm. fear not. Yeah. Do not be discouraged. Mm -hmm. With patience possess ye the promises of Yahuwah. And the wilderness experience really is the patience of Yashua. Mm -hmm. And uh, Moshe is declaring and explaining the Torah to us in this book of Deuteronomy. And uh, there should be a lot of excitement as we see how to face our challenges and be overcomers and possessors. Mm. Hallelujah. This is a message of hope. Yeah, it is. And I also almost feel happy clapping about it. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah. The joy of Yahuwah is our strength. Praise Yahuwah. Yeah. Okay. And he came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search out the land and bring us again by what way we must go up and into what cities we shall come. And the saying pleased me well, and I took twelve of you, one from each tribe, and they turned and went up to the mountain and came unto the valley of Eshkol and searched it out. They took of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down us, and brought us word again and said it is a good land which Yahuwah our Elohim doth give us. Elohim. Not, Elohim. Notwithstanding we would not go up but rebelled against the commandment of Yahuwah our Elohim. And ye murmured in your tents and said because Yahuwah hated us he brought us forth out of the land of Mitzurim to deliver us into the land of the Amorites to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled to the heavens, and moreover, we have seen the, children, the sons of Anakin there, giants. Yeah. Yeah, can I just mention yeah. that word melted? Um, you know, as Rahab it pointed out, when Joshua went into the land, because of everything you you're here where we had done for the children of Israel, all the miracles that they'd done, the deliverance from Egypt and, and things like that, they, the Canaanites' hearts were melted on account of um, witnessing the power, the power of Yahweh Yodhe Wawe in the lives of, uh, of, of Israel, right. yeah. even in the desert wanderings, okay? So they their hearts of our enemies should have been melted however the 10 spies who brought back a bad report about Eretz Israel because they didn't want to enter into this reality where you would have to take the Torah that you have learned in that desert situation go up and against those six forces of, of, of intense evil and the desolation, the, the 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 shadow of the valley of uh, the shadow of death, thirst, snakes, scorpions, and vipers. Once you've contended with that and clarified the Torah, and you know there is only Yod Hey Wawi and nothing else beside Him, then you're ready to go into the promised land. Amen. Okay, but there's always people that bring a bad report. 
Is that where you want to go? There's people that wanted to remain in the desert. Why? Because in that desert wandering, it's just a spiritual, theoretical Torah. It's you clarifying the Torah by contending against spiritual forces. When it comes to then putting that into practice, i.e. going into the land and overcoming the inhabitants of that land, in order for that to become a holy land, to, to, to move from theoretical holiness, what we learn in a book, to practical holiness, what we yeah. live in, speaking and thinking through our lives, some people don't want to do that transition. We're, we're actually approaching this yeah. at this very moment. Yeah. We are on the, the, the cusp of the millennial reign, yes. the restitution of all things yeah. to possess and recreate the, the creation on the behalf of Yahuwah as then Yahuwah's. Yeah. And not everybody wants to transition. Right. Some people want to stay in the holy little huddle, away from it all, hiding away from it all, you know, and they don't want to put into practice this living Torah. Praise you. This, um, we've this got to make that transition. This application is is our our overcoming of what we're approaching right in this day. Yeah. So we really need the application made alive in us by living these words of Torah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the next verse, the next very verse, is the one we have to hear. Mm -hmm. Then I said unto you, this is your word, Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid. Mm -hmm. Okay, in this time, fear not, dread not. Yeah. Don't keep applying your mind to dread, but apply your mind to the promises of Yahuwah. Because these are the day that they need to be fulfilled mm. as we possess this creation. Yeah. Amen. In, he in, in the Hebrew translation into English, it says, Do not be broken yeah. and do not fear. Hallelujah. Do not be broken. Do not fear. Mm -hmm. Do you know so the, fearful, the fearful in uh, Revelations, I believe it is, are accounted with the adulterous, the abominable, and the fearful. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a demand that we do not fear but trust. Bitachon. Bitachon, yeah. Bitachon. You shall dwell safely in your land. Hallelujah. With bitachon. Verse 30. And Yahuwah, your Elohim, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you. Just let that one sink. Make war for you. <laughs> and Yahuwah that goeth before you shall make war for you. Hallelujah according to all that he did for you in Mitzurim before your eyes. Can you remember the personal miracles you had when you came to meet Yahuwah in the first place? Mm -hmm. Can you remember the transforming of your life? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 31. And in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how Yahuwah thy Elohim bare thee, as a man doth bear his son, in all the way that he went until he came into this place. Of father's love. Mm -hmm. Yet in this thing he did not believe Yahuwah, your Elohim, who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in a fire by night to show you by what way you should go, and in a cloud by day. And Yahuwah heard he shamad and did the voice of your words, and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely. There shall not one of these men, of these e this evil generation, see that good land which I swear to give your fathers. Wow. Mm. Save Caleb, Ke Caleb, or Caleb, Caleb, the son of Yephani. He shall see it, and to whom will I give the land that he hath trodden upon to his children, because he hath wholly followed Yahuwah. Mm. Also, Yahuwah was angry with me for your sake, saying, You also shall not go in thither. But Yahuwah, or Yahusha, Yahuwah's salvation, Yahusha, the son of Nun, hallelujah, there's a Nun, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither, and encourage him who shall cause Yashrael to inherit it. There is a big mystery in here. This is really very messianic. 
um, <clears throat> and it's very much related to the power of the anointing of Yeshua that we've all experienced as born again believers. We've all received an anointing in the power of the soul of Yeshua um, that is one with the name yes. or who comes in the name of yod heh wow -Heh. Um, because this word he here it says Joshua the son of Nun who stands before you he shall come there strengthen him for he shall cause Israel to inherit it he's talking about the land who Joshua however this word he um, in the Hebrew is who <laughs> the, 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 in Hebrew it's he aleph uh, he vav aleph which is who and um this is one of the names of Yahuwah at the level of Keta, at the level of crown, which is the soul level of Mashiach ben Yosef. It's the soul level of Yeshua. It's the Yechida, the only one that is absolutely one. Well, not absolutely one. He's one with the name of yod heh at that level. Okay, the, the, the name of the father. His name is in his name. Yeah, his name is in his name. His name is in his name. Hallelujah. Okay. So he will cause you to inherit. And that word he, which in, in Hebrew is who, is the power to unite heaven and earth together. So the, so you've got yod he wow -he, who, Elohim. yod he wow -he, he is our Elohim. Who, Eloheinu. And this is, yod he wow -he symbolizes heaven. Elohim symbolizes our earth, if you like, the physical nature um, and uh, physical reality uh, on earth. So we need heaven and earth to be united as one. And the power to unite those two as one is the name who, yod heh wah -we, who, Eloheinu, yod heh wah -we, is our Elohim. So here when it says Joshua, son of Nun, he shall cause Israel to inherit it because he is an appellation for Mashiach ben Yosef, who is Yeshua. And it's through his soul, the Yechida, which means the unique one, but it's also, um, you know, to, related to Echad, um, oneness. The, he has the power to unite heaven and earth together. And, um, and it, it, we can even see some kind of indication in this term because whenever the word he used and there's an ambiguity to that um you can always assume that it's it's um your tewawi in some capacity so he will cause israel to inherit it, the land this is the soul of yeshua Yodhewawi through the soul of yeshua will cause us to inherit the land okay uh I'm I don't know if you notice, but my English is not great, even though I'm an Englishman. But one, one grammatic word I learned in in school is "shall" is the most assert, assertive word in the English language. Mm -hmm. I shall, I shall be there. I shall go. I, sh I yeah. shall come. And here it says, "Hallelujah, who shall cause?" Now, isn't that a promise that Yahusha shall cause us? To inherit this earth, mm. it, he shall cause it. So, these these instructions not to fear are talking to us right now. Mm. Hallelujah! With assertive promises from the Mashiach, mm. Hallelujah, and our Father. Mm. Okay, so the guys that were per, are put off by the spies were not allowed into the promised land. No. Now Yeshua said. No man can enter the kingdom of Yahuwah unless he comes as a little child. And I've never seen the root of this before, and even if it is the root. But when I read the next verse, just a few moments ago, before we start this Torah portion. You know, if we've been adult in our thinking and in our knowledge and extrapolate everything we can and still not have shalom, still, still are fearful, then why don't we come as little children? and accept the promises of Yahuwah to attain, hallelujah, mm -hmm. to attain his kingdom on earth as it is in the Shemaim. Do you know he wants to come and dwell with us? Mm -hmm. 
he wants to come and presence himself with us. We got a thousand years to get this right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to read 38 again. But Yahusha, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee. I'm sorry, I've got to say this. No, people say they cannot see uh, the Mashiach who was uh, slaughtered 2,000 years ago in the Torah. But if you, if this is not referring to him now, then you decided to be blind or everything you've learned has made you blind. Mm. This is referring it's to... It's not true, Tara. This is referring to uh, Yahusha. Mm. Yahusha. It is. Hallelujah. Okay. And Yahusha, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither, encourage him, who shall cause thee to inherit it. Mm. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in hither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. Mm. It's a good time to be a little child mm. and come meekly to Yahuwah through Yosha, mm. his provision. Hallelujah. The, the commandments and the testimony of Yosha. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And ye answered and said unto me, We have sinned against Yahuwah. We will go up and fight according to all Yahuwah our Elohim commanded us. And when he had ye had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And Yahuwah said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight. I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of Yahuwah, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites, which dwelt in the mountain, came out against you and chased you as bees do and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Hormah. And ye returned and wept before Yahuwah, but Yahuwah would not hearken. Hallelujah. Yahuwah would not hearken unto your voice, nor give ear unto you. So ye abode in Kadesh many days, according to the days that ye abode there. Yeah. Do so you want, there's... Do you want to mention about him not hearing? Um, because of rebellion? Yeah, we've got to... Um, we've got to always be... We've got to always be... Um, we've got to make ourselves draw close to Yahuwah you know we've got to always draw want to draw close to Yahuwah and when we rebel and when we sin and when we don't trust we're going to create a barrier and we want to try and um, overcome that barrier by turning and doing good so that he hears us um, I don't think there's actually anything written in this but there's also sometimes what can happen is it can uh, we were reading this the other day weren't we? I think it was in here somewhere sometimes we can be presented with like a cloud that comes between whole, us and Yahuwah um, we form that cloud if you like uh, it's like a negative cloud that we've got to somehow try and penetrate through the power of our prayer Sometimes if Yahuwah is not hearing us, there's a reason why he's wanting us to draw on the deep wellsprings that we've got. He's, he's, in, he's invested in us deeply. And sometimes he backs off and he creates a barrier so that we will rise up. We will dig deeper. We will draw on the wellsprings that he himself has hidden within. Just how deep does our faith go? Are we going to be, just because we don't feel like Yahuwah is hearing our prayer, are we going to stop at that? Are we going to accept that? Or are we going to put on like, um, uh, you know, the armour of Yahuwah and, and fight this, yeah. fight through this barrier until our prayers are heard? And that's what he sometimes is wanting us to do. He, don't, he doesn't hear prayers so that we will become defeated and diminished. 
he doesn't hear our prayers because he wants us to battle yeah. and overcome these forces of, of evil in order to again um, enter into his presence. The, the word of Yahuwah could be uh, speaking to your character and you willingly mm -hmm. stay alive in who you think you should yeah. be rather than the character Yahuwah wants you to be. Yeah. Do you know that will cause him to withdraw himself from you? Mm. It may even cause them work. Well, here it causes them not to hear their prayers. Mm. And uh, I don't know about you, I, I want my father to hear my prayers yeah. daily. Shema. I love him. I just love communication with him. Mm. Hallelujah. But he treats us accordingly, doesn't he? Yeah. He asks us to hear. He says, Shema Yisrael. And um, we have got to be hearing and understanding what it is that we are experiencing in our in our lives, and aligning that with the truth of the Torah. Yeah. Um, he de yeah. he desires for us to understand and hear. Yeah. So he will he will match us. We we're trying to understand and hear. So too he will understand and hear us. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. If you got this far, we do appreciate you listening here. And uh, we just love Torah and we love to share it. And may Yah bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and bring you great shalom. Amen. 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 Shalom. Bye.